Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how do you work with grids in Profound.js? How do you load a grid and how do you build a grid? So we're going to start in the visual designer and we're going to build a simple um, screen that allows us to load a product listing. So let's start out with the CSS panel. And we'll resize it, give it a label. So this is going to be our product listing. And then we'll add a grid and we'll give this grid some columns. So this is just going to have a product ID, a description, and an image. So let's resize this accordingly. And then we can start putting fields into the grid. And you'll notice as I'm naming my fields, I'm going to match these up to the definitions that are in my database file that I'm going to be reading. So that's very important. So that both the names and definitions are going to match. And this last field is an image, and I'm going to make some a little bit more space for that image. so that it fits in there just right. And let's put it over here first, resize the image itself, and then put it in here. Now the image is dynamic, so we're going to go to the image source property, and we'll call this PR image, which is a character field with a length of 60. So now let's give the grid a name. We'll call this grid one. And we'll call the screen, screen one. Now the final thing that I'll do is I'll add a close button. So a way to get out of the screen. I'll just put this button here in the corner and we'll give it a response indicator of close. So now the screen is built, let's go ahead and save it. And I'm just gonna save it into my test directory and I'll go ahead and call it prod list. Of course, this is a JSON file. So now the JSON file is built and I'm ready to go and build my code. Now I'm going to show you two different ways of how you can load a grid. The first way is going to be reading records one at a time, and the second way is going to load all the records all at once with pretty much one statement. So the first thing that I got to do is refer to my JSON display file. So we do this with the define display command. And the name of the object is display, I'll call it display, you can call it anything of course, and the name of the JSON file is prodlist.json. Next thing is loading the grid, and I'm going to do this with SQL, and the first step is to just allocate an SQL statement handle. I'm calling it C1, of course it's just a nice short name, you can call it anything. So the next step is to directly execute an SQL statement on this handle. So we're going to use the execute direct method, and uh, the XQL statement is simply select star from products piece. So we're just grabbing all the product records from the database table. And then we're going to go ahead and fetch the information. And what's interesting is that we're going to use a data structure. So I'm going to declare this data structure in just a second. And what this data structure is going to do is it's going to map all of the fields from the products B file into our program here. So we're going to use PJS define to define the data structure. The name of it is DS. Type is data structure, and what's going to make this all work is this ext name keyword, which basically says instead of defining all the subfields of this data structure manually, we're just going to refer to the product speed table, and this is where all the subfields are really coming from. So we can actually fetch all this information in a loop by using uh, this while loop that looks at has more rows, has more rows is an API that tells me if there's any more rows to read out of the statement here, and we can go ahead and keep on fetching while we have more rows to read. And with each record that we read, we're going to go ahead and write that to the grid. And this is done with display.grid1.write. So once all of that data is loaded, we're ready to display the screen. This is just done with the execute method. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So as you can see, all the records here have been loaded and they appear in our grid. So what you've seen is one method to load 
the grid. We're doing it one record at a time. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do something similar, but we're going to load all the records at once. So the first step, of course, is to uh, define the display as we did before. This is going to be identical. Now the way that we're going to use SQL here is a little different. We're going to use a shortcut method that actually grabs all of the products. Instead of reading them one at a time, we're going to grab all the products into a JavaScript array. And this can be done with a PJS query API. And we'll just type in the same SQL statement. So this query API grabs all the records and returns it as a JavaScript array. And then when it comes to working with grids and loading grids, the grid has a lot of different methods that you can utilize. And the one that's appropriate here is called replace records. So we're going to go into the grid and replace all of the records with this list of records that we grabbed from this SQL statement. So once this is done, we can go ahead and execute the screen and save the results here. And what I'm expecting is the same list but this is just a different way to load that same list. So you can see here's the list here of the records. So I hope you found this useful, and now you've seen the two different methods that you can use to load a grid in ProfoundJS.